How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ingus, I'm from IGS Electronics. Today we're going to have a quick video of a one little small fault that I had from work. As you can see, I just came back from work, still got my hat on, and I'm intending to leave the hat on because the hair underneath it looks a lot worse than the hat, so we'll keep it on. So today I was called on to a uh, problem which was to do with Ingersoll, Ingersoll uh, compressor itself. So basically, the, one of the engineers started the compressor, walked off, came back and compressor is in fault. And it's coming up with CK input fault. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Let's grab manual, have a look what it is. Of course, the manufacturer did not include that in its manual. It basically gives like some sort of a descriptions or also different things, but not so much specific. So because by the end of the day, they are into service business, they are not intended to give you much, as much information as as, as least information as possible. So you tend to try to give them a call and try to and they try to make some money out of it. That's what they do. So the, my job was today to try and figure out why the hell does the compressor stop in the first place, what has happened, and obviously fix it. And today I'm going to run you through my thought process of how I have gone through about the problem, how I found the problem, and what rookie mistake I have made while looking for it. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey all well guys, so as you can see in here it says this has already been, uh, this, this picture I've taken out when I already cleared the fault and everything was up and running, but this just, just quickly took a picture of it, so to show what the fault looked like, as you can see in here, let me grab the, the little paint in here, the red one, this guy in here, CK input power fault. So, what happened down there is, uh, obviously, it, would, it, it it could mean many different things, so we're trying to work out what CK would stand for. Would say, I don't know, check power because obviously manual was giving it not giving us no guidance and things like that. There was not much of electrical diagram apart from actually there was a, quite a big diagram on the actual door itself to so give us a bit of a good guidance what is going on. So CK input fault. So first things what what I gonna what I did checked obviously all the MCBs, all the fuses, and all the all the everything that is to do with power runs and things like that, and nothing was going on. So uh, obviously then I checked my uh, phase inputs, into, it was going to the ch in, into a choke, going out to choke, going to the drive, everything was still there, power was there, voltage flying, no problem. What's he talking about? Why is he giving me this fault? Why? What do you mean by CK input power? And I couldn't figure out what it was. So the best thing was because I checked all the obvious things I could possibly check, but I didn't check something that I should have checked. I'd say that in the end of the video. So, and went back to the manual. So, how my thought process was, I needed to figure out what, get as close as possible, what that CK input power would, could possibly mean. Obviously, something to do with power. This is, it was quite so, uh, clearly explained. So, but I needed to figure out more what was happening uh, what uh, the, the, when, the, when actual fault was happening. So, Luckily for us, Ingersoll has uh, put in a bit of information of a data collected, collected data of all sorts of different Modbus readings that they have in there, what they read at the time of the fault. So let's have a look at it. So let's grab uh, the next picture, which is this one. And as you can see in here, I have, let's grab that one again. The one that struck me out straight away was this one in here. At time of the fault, AC input voltage 0 and DC bus voltage 14. Obviously, it would be 14 if it's a 0 AC input going in. So how it usually works, voltage goes into the DC bus. And what, let's say you, you have a 415 volts going in, and you should get approximately 30% extra in DC voltage going into the bus. So uh, I measured it, which I'm going to show you actually now in uh here so we are uh, i'll took a look actually took a picture of a uh board itself in here so here we go so i just did a bit of a uh, graphing it there is my input there's my let me just grab this do 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 so there is our uh input 415 uh, 415 was, well, was about 400 volt was going in and and there's a board and it's going into this board and it was going nowhere else and this is this is where this is where the bus so this is where i measure my dc voltage uh, for the bus so and so let's grab that one i got already and between here obviously we had zero so voltage going in 
nothing coming out. Okay, so that was straight away thinking, okay, what's going on in here? So then I went back a little bit on to a, um, a east of circuit. And then I noticed the east of circuits got a four blocks on actual east top. As you can see in here, four blocks on my east top right in here. So that gave me a thinking straight away. Okay, it looks like this east top, uh, this guy in here, just trying to make it a bit better, is most likely doing more than just one thing. Just showing east up on the screen. What Ingersoll did, yeah, they made the uh, four different things that that four different aspects of the machine that gets turned off with one east up, but with separate switches. So when the east up was released, obviously we all thought that the east up is released. It's not showing fault. East up, no, east up, no, no east up. Well, everything's good. So we completely disregarded the east up section of it, but. One thing that struck me straight away, which gave me, came to my memory, for one of the drives I worked on a long, long time ago, that the input voltage can be disconnected in an event an emergency. Sometimes they add these extra things to the drives that when the, the, the emergency comes in, when the emergency uh, uh, signal comes in, poof, it disconnects the input voltage from the bus and um, just whole thing just goes dead. Drive still stays live. But it should show you the fault on the screen if you have decent drive. But obviously, in my case, my drive was just stripped bare naked. There was nothing really there, so I couldn't really see anything. So, uh, so I was just just trying to guess what is what. So the screen was showing me something, but that's about. I mean, the the HMI screen was showing something, but that's about it. So, so what I did in there went back to the board. Have a oh no that one. Had a look at the uh, board itself. And I noticed two as it was my communications my communications cable in here. Another thing is the whole thing that with this with this drive they were all communicating with the RS2485, which is a within mod bus. So where's my thing? So here we go. So I noticed this guy in here, which is my temperature. And then there's this one. SDR. So then I went back to the board. Quickly have a look what this SDR is. And as it happens, SDR, I wish I took uh, taken a picture of the actual uh, little electrical drawings. The SDR was going to ES3. So I need to figure out what ES3 is. I found what ES is, but I didn't know what the ES3 is. So then it works out as ES1, 2, and 3, and 4. But Ingersoll obviously forgot to put that numbers on it. So I just went from the word ES. And on the manual, as you going to see in a minute. Uh, where is my mouse? I can't see the mouse. So, uh, this guy was coming. This SDR was coming here. This guy in here. And as you can see, the switch is in its normally closed state. It's fine. It's turned off. You probably already guessed it, my rookie mistake. I didn't check the normally or normally closed contacts at the first state. I should have done that, check the resistance between them to make sure, because often, often, guys, those switches do seize up, get some dust in them, and don't really close properly. And after about, I don't know, it was about two hours, me mucking about, that was the fault. The switch wasn't closed properly, and... Uh, and the system was not able to uh, reset itself because obviously the switch with the SDR wasn't closed. And uh, the driver was thinking that there was a problem with it. The e-stop was suppressed. So in my defense, in my defense is uh, I would if I would design a system, also I would say, well, e-stop is pushed, uh, pushed and uh, put them as, as, as subsections the possible causes of it. And obviously... The Ingersoll decided not to do that, so when the e stop is pushed, the e stop actually pops up on the screen. So both of us, me and my colleague that we were working on it, uh, decided, well, when the e stop is pushed, it shows on the screen, here's your e stop, and uh, when you release it, the e stop disappears. So that's why, in my defense, again, does not explain the little, uh, little uh, delay of finding a problem. 
but in, in our defense is is, is kind of was saying that there's no fault with that so and that's what was the fault in it so so look that switch in there actually that e-stop in there it stops four different sections in the machines and every in in that compressor and every single part of that compressor will display different cold from one switch that's something for you if you're watching this video and you have a problem with your compressor and uh, as such so uh it's worth checking out that'll do for this video hopefully this can help you out in the future and uh, definitely is going to give us a good knowledge for me and our colleagues and the people who are going to be working for the company i'm working for and possibly come up across with something like this to check it out in the future thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you do like the video do smash that like do subscribe if you're new to the channel and i'll see you next time